Hello, this is Dr. Harriet Fraud, bringing you the podcast, Capitalism Hits Home, a podcast about the mutual shaping of personal life with political, economic, and social life. And today, I want to talk about the UN's recent World Happiness Report. It's a very, very compelling report. In order to write such a thing, they had thousands of people going out to all the countries of the world asking the same questions. Are you satisfied with your life? Do you feel healthy? Do you feel you have a chance to prosper? Do you feel support, social support from your government, as well as support from caregivers, whether daycare workers or political representatives or nurses or nurses' aides, the caregivers of society? Do you feel like you have nutritious food? and safe, affordable housing. They ask, what about your job security? Do you feel you could, you have a safe, secure job? And if you're dissatisfied, can switch to another safe and secure job? Do you think that the well-being of future generations will happen? Are you hopeful about future generations in your society? Do you feel you have the right to work and be paid fairly for that work and the right to a good, solid education? Do you feel trust in your government? And do you feel trust in other people? Do you think that you basically have all the conditions for mental and physical health as well as the health of your society? Do you feel you can trust it? that it isn't corrupt. Well, things have changed in the United States. We're not among the happiest nations of the world because part of the happiness is avoiding fear, and fear is everywhere. Trump stirs up fear of immigrants by saying things like, if I'm not elected, there'll be a bloodbath. People are afraid. They're afraid of civil war. They're afraid of their own safety. And people have to feel safe to feel happy. There's also a scale that they develop, which is a scale of misery, where they ask people if they feel connected or if they feel lonely. They ask if their incomes are enough to cover their basic needs, if they feel their society is free of corruption, if they want to live longer, if their society has a higher life expectancy than it used to, and they believe in their future. Well, America didn't do as well as it used to because people really are not feeling very good in the United States these days. You can see that by the level of violence, of personal violence, which is singular among the developed nations. People don't feel that the government is benevolent and trustworthy, and they don't feel what the UN feels, which is the goal of government, is personal happiness and social connection. When we assess a policy in the United States, we don't say, well, does this help establish happiness or human misery? And those are questions that are important to ask. First place, how are we doing on health? Well, the U.S. is not doing very well on health. We are the only developed country that doesn't have a public-funded quality, free health program for all of its citizens. One has to pay for health insurance. And numerous people avoid doctor visits because they can't afford the co-pays. 
we don't have universal quality health care. And more and more health care workers are being proletarianized. Hospitals and other health care facilities are now controlled by health care administration companies like Northwell Health or like Kaiser in California. Support for caregivers at these hospitals is so bad that we have had 14,000 nurses on strike just in 2023 in New York City, one city, albeit a big one. And they're on strike for quality of care. They want higher salaries, but they want mainly lower nurse-patient ratio so that they can take care of the people who they're assigned. Salaries are very big at the top, but much smaller when it comes to nurses and nurses' aides who actually take care of the patients. In Kaiser Corporation, which is the biggest healthcare corporation in California, 75,000 healthcare workers were on strike last year. And they were on strike not only for better working conditions, but the working conditions included less patients for each person to have to take care of because they can't take care of people. They're also underpaid, particularly relative to the administrators who are making so much money. In terms of care, one has to ask about personal care, motherhood. Mothers have been the unpaid social support system for America for a long time. But that isn't there anymore because women, all women, used to be minority women. Now all women have to work outside the home in order to make ends meet. And the majority of women are single anyway. And fully 42% of our children are born outside of a marriage. And so childcare is a huge problem. And American children are not doing well. One in four of our children goes hungry. Now, also, there are basic maternity benefits that we lack. Every other country in the world, except for seven nations, gives paid maternity leave. And the United States is the only big nation among them. The second biggest is Papua New Guinea that has 3,169,000 population. Others are, are countries like Palau that has 19,000. So the United States is an outlier in not protecting mothers. Also, daycare workers are paid very, very little. All care workers are. They're among the lowest five professions. Things like nurses' aid, home health aid, aid in old age homes, daycare. The average that they get paid, those care workers, is $31,000 a year. Quite amazing when those who are the best paid, like Elon Musk, gives himself a billion dollars a year salary, and the Walton brother, the Walton family that owns Walmart, earn, not earns, earns, sounds like they deserve it, but get four million dollars a minute. So there's a big discrepancy here. We have to look at where our wealth is going, because it certainly isn't going to the people who take care of us. And if the object of a government is to make its people happy, we're not doing very well. The people who do the best are the Scandinavian countries because they have a very strong social support net, not only child care and after school care and summer care for children, but care for the elderly, care for retirees, all sorts of connections that are free. 
one thing they look at to gauge a nation's happiness is to see whether that nation's wealth, its gross domestic product, GDP, is distributed across the population, or if it's in a few hands. Well, we know that in the United States, 90% of the wealth of this country is held by the 1%. So that is not distributed equally. We look for nutritious food, and we have to see that our children are not fed nutritiously. Our food is laced with chemicals and preservatives. And children's advertisements are full when they watch television because they're home alone often. They see ads for Cheetos and Fritos and pre-prepared little peanut butter snacks filled with preservatives. There was a study showing that the average U.S. child has as much real nutrition in a day as a hungry Nigerian child who has a half a cup of lentils. We look and see whether people have safe and affordable housing. Well, rents are higher than they've ever been in the United States. And that's because capitalist landlords, certainly that's so in New York City, can raise the prices. And even when they're regulated, politicians like our mayor allow them to raise the apartment rents 5 to 9%, which is, of course, absurd after a pandemic. There are more homeless now in the United States than ever before. Another thing we look for is positive social connections. Connections with friends, connections in a political movement or a social movement, and there America is not doing very well. There are fewer people involved in any organization, whether it's a PTA or a blood drive or a political movement or anything else, then we're in only bowling leagues, bowling leagues alone in 1970. And that makes people very, very lonely. Also, you look and see what is the happiness of future generations? Is there a hope that future generations will do better? Well, in the United States, that isn't so. We were the, one of the only countries in the world where young people were more pessimistic about the future and about their own possibility of happiness than older people were. And as far as trust in government, there isn't much trust in government. People don't think their needs will be taken care of. Now, it is true in our capitalist system, there are two capitalist parties, and In order to run, one has to collect billions, which one will have to pay back after the election. The last presidential election cost the, spent four billion dollars. Who's going to pay that back when they get in office? And that's why there is no other developed country that allows private money in elections. In France, where Sarkozy tried to smuggle in private money, he had a fundraising dinner where uh, the head of L'Oréal brought brought an attaché case full of euros, and he is facing jail and was disqualified. And that's true of all the Scandinavian countries, the Netherlands and Germany. Freedom from corruption is another thing that shows that you believe in your government. That isn't looking very good in the United States either, because just lately in the last few months, there have been deaths and tragedies due to corruption, capitalist corruption. So, for example, the Francis Scott Key Bridge collapsed. It collapsed because a huge container ship lost control and went speeding into its girders, which didn't have fenders on them. 
and this is a question of capitalist profit. Fenders around the bridge bottoms keep them from folding, but they cost money. And governments don't want to raise taxes on billionaires because they want their campaign contributions. And so they cut back on things like infrastructure, on fenders on the pilings of a bridge. Another reason that it's a case of capitalist corruption is it was a big Maersk, M-A-E-R-S-K, container ship that was out of control, going too fast, and overloaded with containers. Some employees at Maersk had said that there were safety concerns, that they had to do something about those, that these huge, heavy ships could get out of control. Those people were fired, and their comments were hidden. Also, the Maersk company loaded this enormous container ship with more containers than it should have had. So when it lost control and rammed into the pilings of the bridge, the bridge folded. Also in the past month, we've had accidents from Boeing, our biggest airplane manufacturer. A door blew off. Another plane had to land because it was in danger. Something caught fire. And it turns out that Boeing's leaders, in order to save money, have cut back on inspectors and cut back on the length of time one has to inspect a plane before it goes off and cut back on the workers who do the work to make sure the planes are safe. And that's why, in addition to, of course, when workers complained and whistle blew, they were fired. And capitalist corruption caused those accidents. The bigger accident in Boeing, in the bigger accident, hundreds of people were killed. In the latest, the door blew off, but nobody was killed. Now, in terms of the signs of happiness, U.S. in the U.S., the signs of mental and physical health Well, I live in New York City, and we've had a rash of very violent behaviors that are not conducive to mental health. Women are being punched in the head several a day by people who just come up to them and punch them in the head. We also have a mass murder almost every day, and a mass murder is where at least four people are shot. They have no relation to the shooter. At least four people are randomly shot. These are not signs of mental health. These, and they're all committed, I must say, these crimes by men who have been most seriously affected by the outsourcing of strong union jobs and by unemployment and demotion from being the heads of family who could support their wives and dependent children to ones who can't. Now that luxury of supporting dependent wives and children was a luxury only for white men, but our nation used to be much more of a population of white men whose unionized jobs were outsourced to China. And there again, it's corruption. Strong socialist parties In the Netherlands, in Sweden, all the Scandinavian countries, and in Germany and France, have outlawed outsourcing. In Sweden, if you want to outsource your factory and close it in Sweden, you have to get every single employee an equivalent job. So if they want to stop making whatever they're making, it's easier for them to introduce a new product in their factory. A sign of a happy nation 
is a nation where people feel safe. People are not feeling safe. On TikTok, there are all sorts of videos that commemorate the fact that every day in New York, several women are punched in the head by people they don't know. Just someone comes over and punches them. Actually, that someone is a man who comes over and punches them. In addition, we've had a mass murder for every day of last year, and we're on record to do that again, where some stranger comes over and just shoots people out of rage so that our people are not happy. You don't go punching people in the head if you're a happy citizen. In addition, addiction and suicide and overdoses are going up. America is less happy than it ever was. Now, what can we do about that? What can we do to restore our happiness? Well, a huge aspect of happiness is connection. So we need to build connections with people. A hopeful sign of this connection is that strikes have increased so dramatically in the last year, even in 2024. 400,000 UAW, United Auto Workers, struck very imaginatively and won their strike. They won 25% wage increase and better working conditions. Because the UAW is a democratic union allied with the Teamsters who supported them, the Teamsters, who are the Union for the United Postal Workers, the UPS, could threaten that their 340,000 workers would also go out if they didn't get better working conditions, if they had time off so they didn't have to pee in bottles to save time. And that is a huge, huge thing that's helping to change American happiness. Martin Luther King, as well as Sean Fain, the head of the um, Auto Workers Union, have said that a united working class is what we need in America. And unions are the way to go. Another very hopeful thing is that there is talk of all the movements coming together, of a socialist presence and a socialist party in the United States. Because those that have won unforeseen gains have come together. In the UAW strike, people of all different sexual orientations, all different races, all different religions, all different sexual preferences, all and all together united to win. Climate scientists are uniting with others in a socialist presence. People are uniting across all lines, and it is a union of all of us that will change the United States and bring our happiness back, our life satisfaction, and rescue us from falling further. Thank you. Goodbye for now.